Good morning, everybody. Great to see you here today. I want to welcome those of you joining us online. Thank you for tuning in here as we begin, as Billy said, this brand new series called I Have Decided. I Have Decided. A um, couple quick announcements here before I jump into the message, and that is we have a Mother's Day tea coming. So for you moms with kids, it's primarily with moms with children. So if your children are adults, I mean, you can still come, but it's kind of geared towards uh, moms with, with kids as a way to kind of connect. But on uh, May 13th at 2 o'clock right here at the church, we have a Mother's Day tea. And Billy mentioned the meet and greet. So 1215 today, if you can make it, if you're newer to the church, we'd like to meet some of the staff here. Uh, would love to meet you. We're going to hear our story a little bit, and then we'll get to, to know you a little bit better. So uh, that's today as well. All right. Uh, good news. Last week, we had in our three campuses, three services each, in our nine services, we had 2,414 people come to Easter services. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Praise God. Several people put their trust and their faith in Jesus uh, to receive Him as their Lord and as their Savior. So i uh, very happy with that, and I thank God for that. Feels finally like COVID is over for sure. Amen. <laughs> I have decided. Think about your life for a moment. What are some of the biggest decisions you have made? If you're younger, it's maybe, you know, what, what classes I want to emphasize, what sports teams I'm going to join. And once you get to that young adult age, it's, you know, am I going to go to college? Am I going to get married? Who am I going to marry? That's a big one. Um, am I going to go to the military? What do I want to do for a career? There are a lot of milestones in life. And then when, once you're a little older and you're married, do we want to have children? Are we going to adopt children? What are we going to do? I mean, there's some big decisions that we make. And as a result of those decisions, it makes an impact for the rest of our lives. And it's kind of like, you know, the cup of the Holy Grail, choose wisely. If you choose wisely, your, your life goes in one tra trajectory. And if you choose unwisely, it kind of affects it negatively. And decisions, there are some big decisions that we make in life that have a, a big impact. But I can, can I tell you this? There's no decision more important than this one we're going to talk about here today. And that is the decision to follow Jesus Christ. Because that not only has implications in this life, but that has implications in the life to come. Eternal implications. And when we come to Jesus and follow Jesus, there is a cost to that. Actually, Jesus talks about it in Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 14. He said, listen, if you're going to come to me, it's kind of like a builder who goes to build a tower. You're going to build a house. You first sit down and you map it out. Am I going to have enough money to finish the project? Or am I going to run out and have a house without a roof? You know, it, it's like going to war. If we're going to go to war, do we have enough troops? Do we have enough resources? Can we beat the enemy? And Jesus said, listen, if you want to be my disciple, you got to count the cost. Part of that cost, Jesus said, was that you have to learn to deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. It's not a small decision. When you decide to follow Jesus, it will affect everything in your life. Your relationships, sometimes your relationships with family, certainly your relationships with friends will affect your ability to make decisions about your future about things you, you want to do, perhaps, and God won't, won't allow you to do because He has a better plan or a different plan. When you come to Christ and we say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord, 
We're going to see that as we end this in Romans 10. We call on Jesus as our Lord. I mean, we all want Jesus as Savior, don't we? We all want hell insurance. I do. I don't want to go to hell. I, I like the Savior part. Save me from my sins. Save me from eternal hell. And that is part of the package. Thank God. But it's when we say Jesus is Lord, that's when it gets a little more uncomfortable. Because on that throne in our heart, there's only room for one. And that's God himself. To him be the glory. His is the kingdom. And as you serve the Lord and as you follow Jesus, he's the leader, we follow him. We follow him through his word and through the knowledge of him and what he enjoys. And then as we develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit, we follow the Lord. And sometimes there is that cost that we're talking about. But it's always worth it. I honestly don't think I've ever met a human being who followed Jesus, who lived to regret it. Here's a paradox, and Jesus he teaches us this paradox. He said, you want to find your life? How many want to find your life? Yeah, I want to find life. I want to find it. He said, if you want to find your life, then you have to lose it. That's the paradox. But if you lose your life for my sake in the kingdom, you will find it. You'll find the meaning of life. You'll find that purpose. You'll find, like Bono said in you 2 I still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> if you haven't found what you're looking for, it's because you haven't looked and found a life of following Jesus where we are a disciple of his. A disciple means a disciplined follower. And so we're going to be talking these next couple of weeks about some of the really some basic things in the Christian faith, but sometimes it's things we overlook or sometimes it's things we don't really understand. In particular, the next two weeks, we're going to look at the two ordinances that God has given His church. We're going to look at water baptism. We're going to look at communion, what they mean, and why we should participate. If um, in one water baptism is a it's a one off, and communion, the Lord's table, is something that we can do as often as we meet together if we want. The, the significance, the importance of these things. So today, water baptism. Now, I understand that many of us in here are believers, been serving the Lord for quite a while, and probably there's many, many of us that have been water baptized. I remember um, when I was just a little kid, I, got, I asked Christ to be my Lord and my Savior when I was, I don't even know how old I was. I was like six, seven, eight, I don't know. But I remember the moment my mother was kneeling at my bedside and said, Kirk, I know you believe in the Lord. Of course I do. Then you need to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. And I said, yes, I do. And I remember praying, even as a little kid, remember Jesus saying, just the faith of a child. Just had that faith of a child. Yeah, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, that you died on the cross for my sins, that you rose from the dead. Forgive me. All my long list of, you know, seven-year-old sins, forgive them all. Be my Lord and Savior. And something changed. When you call on the Lord, he comes to live on the inside of you by his spirit. And from that moment on, I just had a desire to read the Bible. I had a desire to serve the Lord. And I had a desire to get water baptized once I began to understand, oh, this is what God's calling me to. But I didn't for a while because I thought it was too cool. Too cool for homeschool. I mean, I'm an 80s kid. I had feathered hair and a comb in my back of my pocket. But there was something on the inside of me. It was the Holy Spirit. You need to obey the Lord. You need to take this step of faith and obedience. And I remember when I finally did it. I got up there. It was in a church. I got baptized in a baptismal tank. And I finally got baptized. The pastor dunk me, I come back up, and I just had this feeling of, oh, thankfully, I've obeyed the Lord. It's a wonderful thing. 
why do we get baptized anyway? I mean, what's the big deal? I want to give you three quick reasons why you need to be baptized if you're a believer in Jesus, if you haven't been yet. And the first is this, uh, Jesus modeled it. He was the model. He was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. In Matthew 3.16, it says, after Jesus' baptism, as Jesus came, notice this, up out of the water. We're going to talk about sprinkling. We're going to talk about um, a little dab will do you. We're going to talk about infant baptism here in a minute. I want to explain those things to you. But notice that Jesus went into the Jordan River, which is not a real clean river, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's kind of cool. It comes out of the Sea of Galilee, all the eastern side of the nation of Israel, all the way to the Dead Sea, the lowest spot on earth. And Jesus was baptized in that river. And when he came out of the river, out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. He was fulfilling all righteousness. Jesus set that example. He said, the Father, John the Baptist said, you should be baptizing me, Jesus. I shouldn't be baptizing you. And Jesus said, no, this, this is to fulfill all righteousness. You, you need to baptize me. And so Jesus set that example. And then he commands it. Not only did he model it, he commands it for his people. Jesus said that we as his disciples should be baptized and we should baptize others. Look what the Bible says in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And this is known as the Great Commission. Every church that is alive on planet Earth takes the Great Commission to heart. It's the disciple-making mandate from Christ himself. And here's what he said. Jesus tells his disciples, go and make disciples of all the nations, all, every people group. And when you make disciples of them, make sure you baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus models baptism and now he commands his church, go and baptize people and teach them to follow these commands. And that's what I'm doing here today. If you haven't been baptized yet in water, I'm saying, here's what the Lord is saying. You need to be baptized Amen. And we have some baptisms here today. And by the way, we, if there's some folks in here, if the, the Lord is tugging on your heart and you realize, you know what, I need to be baptized. As Billy said, we have t-shirts, shorts, towels for you. We're going to do a baptism at the end of the service. We would be pleased to baptize you. Third, third reason here is the early church practiced it. And every church since practices baptism, but all through the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, when the church was born, baptized, that's the message. Listen to what Peter says here in Acts chapter 2. When the, when the people heard this, they heard the gospel. They were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the other apostles, what do we do? What, do, what am I supposed to do anyway? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. Have this change of mind where now you're, you're turning to God, turning from your sin, putting faith in Jesus, and taking steps of faith and obedience. Be baptized. That was the message. Mark says the same thing. All through the, the book of Acts, in Jerusalem, and then when the gospel spread to Judea and Samaria, and then to the utter, uttermost parts of the earth, it was the same message. Repent, be baptized, put faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Have you done that? If in your heart you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He is Lord of all, the resurrected Lord, and you've called on His name to forgive your sins. Have you obeyed Him in baptism? You now, there's some reasons, I think, why, why we don't sometimes, and I want to kind of talk through these a little bit. One is fear. I mean, my, my wife was scared, but here's what she was scared of, water, because <laughs> she didn't swim. Since then, she's learned to swim a little bit. And we, we have an old boat, so we'll go out, you know, to some of the lakes. I love the lakes in Maine in the summer, don't you? 
And so, so she's gotten to the point now where she's working through this fear of water. Well, she'll put a life jacket on and she can jump out of the boat, you know, 100 feet of water below her and she's okay. But it wasn't always like that. <laughs> she was petrified of water. And she gave her heart to Christ when she was just a little girl. And her entire uh, childhood into teen years, she knew she should be baptized. And she always, she said she lived in condemnation because she wasn't. But the big issue with her was just fear. She was scared that if she gets dunked, the water's going to go up her nose and she would choke and gag. But it bugged her. You know what happened to her? She went to a youth camp, a bunch of students there, and the Lord really touched her heart. And she said, baptize me now. I have the courage. And she went and she got baptized right there. And she said, when I did, I just felt this weight lifted off. Oh, thank you, Lord. There's other reasons, and I'll just hit these real quick. Sometimes it's simply ignorance. Some believers don't realize that this clear commandment that believers should be baptized. And so out of ignorance, they're like, oh, I didn't think it was that big a deal. Uh, yeah, it is. Others, and this is many of you in here, as a little infant, you were sprinkled. And let me just say that, because I know that's probably many of you, have, that's been your experience. And let me just say this, the heart behind your parents wanting you to serve Lord, the Lord was good. That was right. And the teaching that uh, they had received at that time, you know, we're going to have our little child christened or, or, you know, baptized, they sprinkle them or, you know, that's, that shows the parents that want their kids to serve God. That's a right heart. But don't you want to follow the Bible when you get the understanding of what it means? Every example in Scripture where people were baptized, they were immersed. They weren't dipped. And that's actually what the word means. I'm going to explain that in a little bit. But here's the thing. We have no examples, not one, anywhere in the New Testament where an infant was baptized. Not one. Well, where does that come from then? Well, there's a whole a branch of theology. And by the way, I know some wonderful believers, even have family members, that have baptized their, their infants and we love them. I appreciate the heart behind it. I just don't see it in Scripture. Um, but here's how, how this doctrine goes, covenant theology. They look at the old covenant, and they said, well, there was a sign that you belong to God under the old covenant. And that sign that you belong to God under the old covenant was circumcision, which is a little unfortunate for the girls, but that's just the way it was. Now, under the new covenant... They say, well, there's, we don't have circumcision anymore because circumcision now is of the heart. So what we do is we, we baptize the infants as a sign of the covenant, that they're covenant kids. Again, I, I appreciate the heart behind that and the ceremony of that is good. But listen, if you are a follower of Jesus and you were sprinkled, you can appreciate that. Uh, your parents wanted you to serve God. That's the right heart. But now that you have an understanding of what baptism is, that Jesus modeled it, commanded, all the churches did it this way. It's all through Scripture. Now it's time to be immersed. Now it's time to be baptized under your own understanding and belief, and not just the belief of your parents. Um, there's another reason I've seen, and that is simply pride. Pride. And this, this one's tough because this, this scenario plays out like this. I've seen this before. Okay. Now, I've, I've been serving the Lord for years and years and years. And I know I should have got baptized when I first got saved, but I just didn't. And now the longer I go without being baptized, the more awkward it would be if I get baptized. People are going to know, what, you didn't get baptized? You've been serving the Lord how long? And so it's just like, eh, you know, I'm not going to do it because I would feel badly that it took this long to do it. And if that's where you are, let me just say this. It's better to humble yourself and obey God and have the favor of God on you rather than the favor of man anyway. And people here are going to cheer for you getting baptized, even though you delayed this all this time. So... Don't let pride stand in the way of your obedience to God and his word. 
Another thing here is uh, indifference. Indifference is another reason. You know, indifference is this, this cavalier attitude. Was, you know, it's not a big deal. You know, it doesn't fit into my lifestyle. It's, I just don't think it's that big a deal. And if someone has that attitude, I would say, well, what is a big deal then? How can you look at Scripture? If you're a Christian, a follower of Jesus, you've decided to follow the Lord and His example. How can you look at the Scripture and just turn, eh, roll your eyes at it? Eh, not a big deal. That shows there's something not right here. That anyone would do that to God. Now, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if you truly belong to the Lord, you want to please Him. You want to follow Him in this way. Another reason, and I don't expect this is anyone in here, simply defiance. It's just like a two-year-old, no! Share your toys, Johnny. No! You're just not going to move for anybody, including God. I hope that's not your heart. I'm not even going to give that one much time because... I just can't even fathom it, really. But another legitimate reason why people don't get baptized is they simply are not, they're unregenerate. They haven't been born again. So they have a knowledge of God in their head, but they haven't experienced God in their heart. Their spirit is not alive unto God yet. And if that's you, that can be solved very quickly. talk about that in a minute. Let me give you a few things of ideas what baptism is. What is baptism? Well, the word, the Greek word is baptizo. Here's what the word literally means. It means to immerse or to plunge. That word immerse is the most common. This is why we immerse people in the water when they're baptized. The Bible doesn't talk about sprinkling. The Bible doesn't talk about dabbing. The Bible doesn't talk about pouring. The word literally means immerse, to plunge. Immersion is consistent with the metaphor that the Apostle Paul uses in Romans, and this is one of the most famous passages that specifically talks about the meaning of baptism the symbolism of baptism in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 7. It said, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore, notice this wording, buried with him through baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. We should no longer be slaves to sin. What is this? Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So, Here's the picture. When we go down under the water and immersed under the water, we are dying. That is the picture. We are buried with Christ. The old man has died. And we come up in newness of life. Baptism is that physical outer demonstration of the inner work that has taken place. It's the public ceremonial depiction of our death to sin death to our old life and the resurrection into our new life in Christ. And it's, it's letting people know publicly, I belong to Jesus. I am a Christian. I'm a Christian. I am a follower of Jesus. I think one of the... Um, my favorite stories about baptism in the Bible is, is the Ethiopian eunuch where God instructs Philip to run and to find this Ethiopian who is in his chariot 
And uh, he's reading the book of Isaiah, the scrolls from Isaiah. Philip joins himself to that chariot under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And, and the guy is just curious. He said, I really want to please God. I've gone to Jerusalem to worship. I want to know, is this prophet talking about himself or somebody else? Philip, with joy, explains to him what the scripture means. How the Messiah came and suffered and died and has risen from the dead. And as he's preaching the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, he, he, the eunuch has faith. He's like, I, I see it. Jesus is the Messiah. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. I need my sins forgiven. I need Jesus. What do I do? I'll repent. I, I want to be baptized. And there was water there. And he said, why can't I be baptized? There's water. And Philip says, you can. You don't need to go to a 12-week class. No, I'm not knocking that. Get all the understanding you can about baptism, and about growth in the Lord. That's wonderful. But all you need is to know Jesus. Faith in Christ, you're a candidate. Let's get baptized. In the book of Acts, immediately people would get baptized. They would hear the good news about Jesus. They would put faith in Christ and they would be baptized in the name of Jesus. Let me just say this because there are um, a couple different understandings, obviously, about water baptism. Remember when we started the great... Uh, commission, Jesus said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus did say that. We, we just read that, Matthew 28. And then when we look at the book of Acts, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so some people make a big deal about how you're baptized. What words are spoken over you when you're baptized? Some baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, because that's what Jesus said in the Great Commission. Some say, no, no, no. You look at the book of Acts, it's always in the name of Jesus they're baptized. In the name of Jesus they're baptized. And so here's what I do, just so you don't split any theological hairs. And We just baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and all the power of Jesus' name. You get it both ways. You don't got to worry about it. But we do see examples of both in Scripture. Let's just talk about what baptism is not real quickly. Then I'm going to invite those of you that have put faith in Christ but have never followed through with baptism to go see Pastor Billy here in the back. He's going to get you a T-shirt, shorts that you can keep, by the way, and a towel and get you ready, and we're going to baptize people. We already have some folks lined up. We're going to baptize some folks here today. But just understand this. Baptism, it's not required for salvation. Follow salvation. It's not what gets you saved. You're saved by, by grace through faith. That not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works. So we can't boast. But it is important. It is a step of faith and obedience Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Interesting, it doesn't say Jesus is Savior because his name means Savior. He will save his people from their sins. But Paul says here, Jesus is Lord. We're talking about discipleship. We're talking about lordship. He's our master. He is in control. We follow him. You'll be saved. If, you, if you, you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart. What do you believe? God raised him from the dead, the resurrection. You'll be saved from your sins. For it's with your heart you believe and are justified. And it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And then upon salvation, now it's time to be baptized. I remember years ago when we were uh, pastoring down in the Portland area, we had a woman come to the church who was getting involved in everything. She went to our, what we call now growth track, and um, 
she was serving, she was getting all involved in, in the church and it was wonderful to see her growing. And then we, uh, baptism, she just, it, it made sense to her. I, you know what? I'm a follower of Jesus now. I need to be baptized. And so I remember the day we came and she came up and she got baptized. And after she got baptized, she's like, praise the Lord. She never came back to church again. Because in her mind, okay, now I've done it. I've gone to a church. I've served at the church. I put some money in the church. I've been baptized. Check, spiritual check. Good to go. That's not how it works. This is just the beginning. Relationship with Jesus is forever. Baptism is just another step on your journey. But you need this one. You need to follow the Lord in baptism. No, it is not the means of how you are saved. But it is important once we are saved. There's a couple of denominations that say, yeah, if you're not baptized according to this exact wording, you're in trouble. Then there's other denominations that say, you know, you're not actually saved until you're down in the water. That's when you're saved. They use 1 Peter 3.21 to talk about, you know, the water. You're saved by baptism. But then he goes on to qualify what that means in 1 Peter 3.21. It's not the dirt coming off the body. No, it's the pledge of a good conscience toward God, which was made into effect through the resurrection of Jesus. And it's that clear conscience. It's that public, I am a Christian. I'm taking the step of obedience before the Lord. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And it's a beautiful thing. One more example and then we'll, um, we'll have some folks um, go see Pastor Billy here. Remember the story where Jesus is being crucified with the two thieves on one on either side? Matt, Luke's gospel explains this really well in Luke 23. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you're under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. This man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What's he doing? He has faith in Jesus, that he is the Messiah. He calls on his name. And what does Jesus say? Truly, I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. I love that example. He didn't say, just a second, let me get off the cross, I'll go baptize you, then you'll get saved, we'll get back up on the cross and then I'll see you in paradise. That's helpful, I think, to understand when you're at the bedside of somebody whom you love and is ready to leave this life and you pray and say, call on Jesus and be saved. Faith in Christ alone is what saves us. It's by God's grace. Amen. But you need to be saved. And then you need to be baptized. Let me pray for you real quickly. Those of you that want that assurance in your life that you belong to Jesus, that he's your Lord, you want to put your faith in Christ right now, call on him. I want to invite you to do that with me right now. Would you pray this with me? Dear God in heaven, you are the creator of all things. And your word has told us that you demonstrated your love for me that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. I believe that Jesus, your son, has risen from the dead that he is Lord. Jesus, be my Lord and help me to follow you wholeheartedly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, like Billy said last week or this week, we want to know about it. Let us know in a connect card and fill that out. And if there's anyone here and you want to join these others that are being baptized, 
Pastor Billy, why don't you wave at us here? I know you can't see him on camera, but just go right now out with Pastor Billy. We'll get you set up, and um, we'll have a baptism here in just a few minutes. All right. I think we have a song. Go ahead and sing. God bless you. decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning go with me I still will follow though none go with me I still will follow though none go with me I still will follow no turning back no turning we have Donnie here with us today. Donnie gave his life to Christ when he was 17 years old. And now he's saying, I want to step out in obedience and I want to be baptized and follow Jesus. So Donnie, congrats on this big decision. This is a big deal. You're following the Lord. And you're making, you're making this part of your life. I'm going to ask you in front of friends, family, camera, is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Yes, he is. Amen. All right, let's do this. Donnie, because Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all the power of Jesus' name. We got Robert here. Robert's decided to follow the Lord. And just recently, just this past winter, um, some things came about and he said he wanted to make it real with Jesus. I'm really proud of Robert. Young guys, just making it real with Jesus, I'll take that. I'm happy for you, Robert, making this decision. <laughs> Is 
This is not an easy thing to do in front of lots of people. We recognize that. So you must really believe what you're doing right now, Robert. All right. So I'm going to ask you in front of family, friends, church family, camera, is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Yes, sir. Amen. Let's do this. Robert, because you believe in Jesus, made him the Lord of your life, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and all the power of Jesus' name. My everything, all I am and all I have to bring, I will give to you my everything, all I am and all I have to bring. I will give to you my everything, all I am and all I have to bring. I will give to you my everything, all I Jesus, thank you so much for dying on the cross that we might live forever. And Jesus, in the same way that you rose again, going into the water and coming out of the water, we are dead to ourselves and alive in you, Jesus. And we thank you for that. It's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. We worship you and we give you our whole lives. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen.
God bless you guys. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We'll see you next Sunday. Take care.